With how many mech games that I've been reviewing lately, it almost feels like we are in some sort of mech golden age, or at least a bronze or silver age. The only thing that we are really missing is a reboot of the Grand Old Armor Core series. Once that happens, we will enter in mech gaming nirvana. Until then, we have Mech Armada, a roguelike mech-like currently in early access. We saw how promising both Dual Gear and Mass Builder are, so I'm expecting another promising title. So the game starts out uh, with a cutscene just to set the stage of everything. Basically, aliens have invaded the planet, and there's a scientist who has developed a way to create mechs out of thin air from memory. Uh, so you gotta stop the aliens with the mechs now and the plot is honestly just there to get the ball rolling uh, But that's honestly fine with me from what I understand when the game is fully released It'll wrap everything nicely uh, up in a bow right now. It just goes up to a certain point uh, So we'll have to see more of the story and where it concludes when the game is fully released you're then thrusted into a pretty good tutorial guiding you through the combat. And the combat in this game is basically turn-based grid combat. Uh, we've seen this in many games prior where you have to move and then attack, you have actions, etc, etc. It's honestly really well done here, uh, besides it being seen in other games before. Uh, it's very challenging as your mechs can't really take many hits, so positioning is very important. Uh, unless they have a very heavy or a healer or very defensive build, I'd recommend you don't take any hits at all. Uh, but more on that later. Uh, you can also spawn mechs mid-battle if you have the right amount of energy and do not exceed the uh, amount of parts limitation or the amount of mechs uh, that can be on the field at once. Uh, you can um, increase the mech amount uh, later, like in post-game, from uh, unstable energy that you pick up. Um, but the parts limitation, I believe, cannot be altered. That is uh, basically limited. Uh, it kind of feels, I get why they do it. Uh, it's to encourage part diversification, so you have different parts and different mechs. The game could force you to do that. But it just feels very arbitrary. Like, it doesn't make sense why I can only have, like, two snipers out on the field when it's like, why can't I use most of them? Like I said, it's it. I get it from a technical and gameplay standpoint, but it just feels very arbitrary from a... Get, like just from playing it so like a lot of turn-based games uh, of this ilk uh, combat is followed by being outside of combat uh, here you can uh, research some new parts uh, create new mech templates uh, upgrade existing parts and traverse uh, the map accordingly uh, after picking a type of part that you want to research when you research uh, you're uh, given two choices uh, to make either you know choice a or choice b uh, so it's interesting to see what you go, uh, what comes up, and uh, trying to make the best builds with what you're given. Uh, the map con gives control on how you want to uh, proceed going forward uh, and the builds you want to go through. So it's cool to see that. Uh, reminds me a bit of Warhammer 40k uh, Mechanicus with this mechanic. Also, side note, if you want me to review that game, please let me know in the comments below. So all the maps here lead to one or two bosses that are present in the area. Uh, the earlier bosses are challenging, uh, but I found the later level bosses to be uh, pretty easy. And the main reason why is because by then you'll have stronger parts, um, upgrades, etc., etc. Especially if you're, you know, playing the game correctly. Uh, so I found some of the regular encounters to honestly be harder uh, than some of the boss battles. Even though the boss battles can be fun, I found the regular encounters to be far more challenging. Especially ones where you have to... Uh, instead of just wiping out all the units, the ones that you have to like survive, those I found to be uh, more challenging, uh, especially with the relentless waves that they send to you. So after every boss, you gain an expansion, and these can range from decent to overpowered. And what they are can, uh, one of them in particular can be like a plus one movement to walker type mechs, while another one makes you save up, uh, lets you save up the movement for future turns. And I think when given the choice, I think we'll all take the latter. It's way too easy of a decision to make. Um, and it's all determined by the RNG aspect, just like a lot of these roguelikes are. And just like a lot of these roguelikes, you will end your first run prematurely. How early? Uh, for me, my first time, I didn't even get to the first boss and I died. So <laughs> I felt kind of weak after that. Um, if you collect enough unstable energy, you can use it to purchase uh, some permanent upgrades. Uh, so basically, you can increase the starting amount of chips, and the chips is what you use to uh, research parts. Um, the energy amount, you can increase the amount you start with. 
etc uh, etc et many are beneficial and make the games uh, much easier but that's kind of typical for these kind of games with these roguelikes with permanent uh, upgrades like this uh, so battles one uh, will also unlock new parts to use uh, so you can definitely get some uh, more of a variety of build the longer you play uh, you can also from here adjust the starting parts and mech combinations and it's honestly pretty rewarding when you figure out uh, what will work better early on and get a great starting combination it's definitely a highlight of this game honestly i really enjoy this game but i do see uh one flaw that can definitely turn off some people and to myself a little bit is the game balancing uh and like i said before you know rng is a part of the charm and fun of it all and that's why i play a lot of these roguelikes just to see you know what you can get and uh, if you just hit the right you know uh, the right items and get the right combination it can feel a lot of fun um, but from here, it seems like, you know, once you get the right parts and modifiers and the benefits, you can just become incredibly OP and you'll still have to go through a few battles before the game is officially over, at least, you know, until you complete your run. Uh, but thankfully there are more challenging difficulties, uh, with handicaps that you can play around with. And it seems like there are going to be more that will be introduced, uh, from my understanding. So, uh, that can definitely help with, uh, replay value. Uh, the graphics and audio are both really good, especially for a title of this scope. Uh, there's definitely a really good use of colors for the mechs and the frame rate is smooth for most of the time. Uh, sound effects are also, uh, well done. So from a presentation and production standpoint, everything looks good to me. Uh, last thing to discuss is the sandbox mode and I was very curious on what the developers had in mind since you don't really see something like this in games with rogue elements. Uh, so you basically get to set up your own starting conditions uh, as well as uh, your resource, your starting mech, etc, etc. Um, so it's mainly just to play around. It's not really something that I see myself uh, playing a ton of. But I definitely find it interesting to try out different combinations uh, without running the risk of you know losing something or not having the correct things in order to uh, pursue that combination so it's cool just to see like what you can come up with and see what you know really op build you can make or or what have you or try to you know win with a very weak kind of build so it's cool to see uh what you can do here i mean overall i highly recommend it uh the game is almost in full release status so i'm very excited to see them make it to the finish line uh it's just fun from many different uh, perspectives for me. The combat is fun, the customization is fun, and there's a decent amount of replayability uh, with the sandbox mode, as well as the different handicaps. Uh, so overall, I'm very glad that I was able to play this game. I just hope balancing uh, and those issues get addressed later on so we have a more balanced uh, game and we'll go from there. Anyways, thank you guys for watching as always, and this is Powerhouse, signing off.